because you always <laughs> find time for the important thing. Like yeah. I don't have time means I don't want to. Yeah. This is what I say to people too, when they say, you know, I need to, I need to get it done, especially in, when you're trying to establish a movement routine, I need to get it done right away. Okay. So do it as soon as you get up. I don't have time to do it. Get up 15 minutes earlier, spend 15 minutes. I'm not a morning person. Are you a morning person when your girlfriend calls you and says, Hey, I'm going to take you on a trip to New York city. We're going to go shopping, but we have to get up at four 30 in the morning to get on the road. You're a morning person. <laughs> then I hear lots and lots of excuses. And I've built the whole membership to remove all of those barriers so much so that at the end of the day, it is, you don't want to, and that's okay. But that's just what it is. There's no excuse other than I just don't want to. Very pleased to welcome Leanne today. My name is Lori Power and I'm a group benefit consultant. My job is to be consistently responsive to my clients. I know Leanne's job is to be consistently responsive and remind people that they need to move. What I like most about Leanne when I met her, not only that Laurel made the introduction, so it's all who you know that, that creates that flow, was how you have pivoted your business. And that's really what I want to get into today is that ultimate pivot of you not stopping, you not letting what has changed in the environment move you from your vision and your goals. And your goals are really holistic. It's what can I offer to people to allow them to be better selves for themselves? Take me through a little bit before we get into the business side of things. Take me through a little bit about who is Leanne? Where do you come from? How did you get to this point? And then we'll start to move into that pivot. Um, I'm from a small town and just basically from a very, uh, a series of meeting the right people at the exact right moment in time who then introduced me to the next right person. Um, basically, that's where I came to find movement as an incredibly important part of my life. I mean, I was always interested in it. I was, I, I've done many, many things over the years. Um, but where it became so important to me that I actually wanted to teach it and share it with other people. Um, and then how that turned into, I need to start a business around this because it was so important to me that I helped people. And at the time it was really more focused on women specifically. Um, but I had found something in myself and I found it through a movement practice that I really felt like, um, I needed to share. I actually, at the time when I was deciding about what, I, where, what I was going to do with it, um, I felt it would be really selfish for me not to teach. I felt it would be really selfish for me to hold on to something that was that I had found in me and not share that other people could also find it in themselves. Um, so that's really how I started getting into teaching and turning it into a business, which then led into opening a studio. Um, I had a brick and mortar studio for a year. We had a fantastic first year. We, we won a, a Reader's Choice Award for Best Yoga Studio in our first year. Um, and it was so celebrated our one year anniversary that we, we started having people from Southwestern Ontario around the region asking us if we would come and teach in their areas. So myself and my team. Um, so this was happening four months before COVID hit that I started having people say, hey, can you come to Guelph? Can you come to Toronto? Can you come to Listowel? All these places. Um, and I really had to take a step back from my business plan, which I had just refinished for year two. And I thought, you know, I feel there's an opportunity here for expansion um, that I won't be able to have if I hold on to the brick and mortar. So I actually, three months before COVID hit, I let go of the studio to teach across the region. And then of course, uh, you know, that really for me was just coming back to my why and the purpose in, again, spreading this empowerment through movement is really what it is for me. Um, that's what I want for people and I want it through movement, but then also to infect every other area of their life because they understand that what they do in a movement practice, um, when they challenge themselves, when they, you know, let go of limiting beliefs, when they get uncomfortable in certain situations and they stay anyway, those are the, that's the power. That's what you get to then take into your business or your career or, or your relationship, um, 
And it's really, really profoundly impactful in your entire life if you allow it to be. So that that's kind of uh, where I started and, and how I feel about movement. I, I love that. It's a passion that drives you. It's a calling that yeah. you respond to. And people are responding to that. One of the things I think that you really embody in the movement game um, that sets you apart from other people is doing what Laurel talks about all the time is you've pulled back that slingshot. Instead of just moving forward, to overuse the term, instead of moving forward just for the sake of moving forward, you made it a point to say three months before COVID hit, you had made the decision to let go of the bricks and mortar. Somebody might say you're clairvoyant, right? And you saw something coming. But I love the way that you described that you paused and reestablished the business plan around what was motivating you, where the need was and how you were going to take that through. Now, most of us in business have somebody to be accountable to. Take me through that accountability aspect of saying, okay, yes, I know I've already come up with that business plan. But this is where I'm going to massage it. Take us through how you do that. Because sometimes that's a full stop. That's the excuse where people do stop. Oh, I can't get it by my controller. Or I can't get it by so-and-so. So they don't push it forward, even though that's what's driving them forward, so to speak. But they do stop. So there were many conversations, of course, around that time. I did have an entire team that was working at the studio with me. Um, and so there was a lot of conversations that I were, was having with my team to say, you know, I haven't made a decision, but here's how I'm feeling. And I wanted to collect their feedback um, and see how it would make them feel. Because it, essentially at the time, what I was proposing was let's all expand under the, the kind of umbrella of Second Skin um, and really just dig into expanding our network. Um, I had business mentors that I was working with. There were a lot of conversations and a lot of, um, are you sure this is the right thing to do? But ultimately I have to say, um, I'm, a, I'm a, the type of person that has a lot of conviction in my decision making and a lot of confidence in that, because when I know that something is right for me, I can literally feel it in my body. Like I can feel it that this is what I need to do. And so when I get that type of conviction and I'm having conversations with people who are certainly involved and they're maybe, you know, asking questions and, and maybe they're poking holes in my idea. Um, and those are the things, you know, I, I encourage that. I actually really love when people bring those other perspectives because it allows me to then think deeper and dig deeper into why do I really, really want to do this so I can answer some of those questions. But ultimately at the time it was, I know you and I know that if you know that this is right to do, that this is right to do. And so I had the back and the support of, of every person that I spoke with. And when we announced that we were leaving the brick and mortar, we did it as a celebration. Um, it very much was at the time I looked at everything and I thought, actually the studio is holding us back. These four walls aren't big enough for what we want to do. These four walls aren't big enough for the change that we want to create as, as a brand, as a business, and for me, as a, just as a person. Um, and so when I started to see that it from that perspective, I felt like the studio was actually an anchor um, and holding us back from the expansion. So when we announced, hey, we're, we're actually leaving the brick and mortar, but good news is we're going to teach all in all of these different areas. Um, it was very much a celebration and people accepted it as that. So when you decided to leave the brick and mortar and we're going to say now prior to the pandemic. Yes. Was the idea then much how it evolved or did the pandemic hit and then you go, oh, well, I'm going to do yet another pivot. Take me through leaving the brick and mortar and then the next pivot. So originally when I left the brick and mortar, I thought what we're actually going to be able to do is active market research. We're going to be teaching in all these areas. We're going to be building our new uh, our network and we're going to be able to see in which city or which area 
has like the most connection. So where, where do we see the people, the numbers that are growing the most? And then maybe that's where we'll open up our next studio when we decide that that's the right time for it. Um, so it was with, with the intention of expansion, but then also really feeling where our community was and, and being present and being there. And then COVID hit and we weren't able to do what we were doing. I mean, I was traveling around teaching 16 classes a week at various locations. And of course, you can't do that when you're not allowed to teach in person. Um, so right away, I thought, okay, this sucks. <laughs> Um, and then I, I just immediately was, well, what can I do? What can I do? Um, because I am a firm believer in always looking for where are the opportunities that I can go after instead of sitting in the negativity of this sucks. I can't do this and I can't do this and I can't do this, which is what I was doing with the entirety of my business. I wasn't allowed to do. Uh, so I started to look at what can I do and and an online or a virtual membership was definitely something that I thought, you know, later on down the road, I would do. Um, but of course, it was the very first thing that that I thought of um, when this was all happening, because what else could I do? This is what I could do. Um, so then again, you know, I had some conversations with people. I had some conversations with my partner. And he actually came home one day um, after having a, a conversation with me and he, he, he had bought a camera um, for me. And he said, just start filming classes, just start. You just have to, you just have to start. Um, and that was all I needed was just someone to say, go for it. Um, and at the time I was, so I had kind of developed my own style of, of class, uh, which was a combination of all the things that were really important for me in a movement practice, but also important for me to help with the mindset piece, which is where I really wanted to connect people with the movement and, and the rest of their lives. So con combining yoga with, I, I love, you know, challenging the body. So there's some cardio aspects, some very athletic aspects of it, but also affirmations and visualization in the actual practice. Those are the types of classes that I was creating and filming. And I filmed a lot. I was filming six and seven hours a day, six days a week. I was really trying to get ahead in all of the, um, all the filming. Cause I didn't know, you know, net, at the time that I actually started filming, I thought this is a great opportunity. I've got all the time in the world. I'm going to get as much done as I can. Um, and then I quickly realized that, uh, you know, there were a lot of things happening in the world at the time. The Black Lives Matter movement was really, really, really prevalent in my life. I was having a lot of conversations with people about what was happening. And I really decided from a business perspective that I wanted to do something to be able to help create change. That's, you know, I, I'm, I'm really passionate about creating change. Um, and one of the things that I didn't recognize from my own network, from my own little bubble was that, um, you know, people of color are so underrepresented in the fitness industry. And in my network, I had all kinds of people that I was, was seeing represented that were studio owners and were highly respected um, fitness professionals. So I didn't see it from, you know, the whole that it is. Um, and then once I did, I thought this is unacceptable and I didn't understand it. So I started asking the people that were in my network, if they would like to be featured on, on the platform that I was then building that turned into, we want to feature every race. We want to feature every gender, every sexuality, every age and every body type. And so digging into just the diversity and the inclusivity pieces. I was like, this is really important to me. It has to be highlighted. It has to be seen and shown. It can't just be words. It has to be something that people see what we put out as far as our business as a whole and that they understand it even with me say without me saying the words. And that led into, well, if we're gonna offer all of these people to be part of our community, we need to offer movement styles that satisfy all of their needs. Uh, we need to offer classes for everyone from prenatal to mom and baby, kids, adults, and seniors. Um, and we need to offer a platform where people get to have their say so that they can say, you know what, I loved yoga for three years. 
and now I'm ready for something a little different. And what would you be, you know, would you bring in this style of movement? Um, and the answer will be yes because I believe in all kinds of movement. I don't believe that one is better than the other. I think, um, you know, we, variety is so important so that we don't get ourselves into a place of dreading movement, that it should be fun and it should be exciting. And sure, there, there are gonna be days where you, you don't feel like it. Um, and that's okay too. But to get back into just a good, healthy routine of incorporating movement in, as part of your life, you need to have access to a wide variety so that it doesn't ever actually go away. So that became really important to us. And then the other kind of key piece was really the, the representation of different body types. And this specifically has now shifted um, so much of what our vision is for the business. So body positivity is, you know, there's a lot of people that are talking about body positivity. There's a lot of um, different representation that we're seeing from, from different platforms and different memberships and, and just, you know, in society as a whole, it's we're embracing different body types, which is so beautiful to see. But in the fitness industry, we have so much work to do. It has been so concretely established as you move to lose weight or you move to tone up or you move to drop a size or you move so that you look like this person. And that's not what I'm about. I'm really, and I actually believe that because of the way that our society is now embracing different types of bodies, that the soil is ripe for change in the fitness industry, that we don't need to see the 20 year old with the eight pack that's front and center and the other person that has a different looking body way at the back of the room or doing the modifications every time, you know, like we, we want to see real and normal people finding movement as part of their life because they know that it's healthy to do so and that they don't actually need to want to change the way their body looks in order to have a movement routine. And that's very different. I mean, we know that the fitness industry, like weight loss sells, that's just, from a marketing perspective, it's so unfortunate, but it just, it just does. You know, there are still people that are looking for diet pills. There's still people that are looking for, you know, the, the quick fix. Um, and I, so I understand why things have been established in that in the fitness industry as they have been. I mean, I understand why there's there is a company called Beachbody, um, but I really truly hope that in the future and in the very near future, um, we will all collectively make a change so that more people get access to movement and more people feel like they have a safe space to find movement without judgment or without you know, again, that need to change the way their body looks. So that's kind of where our mission as a whole has, you know, shifted to, again, creating change now in a much bigger sense than, than just my business. It doesn't matter who we are, we can move. But you're not just a YouTube channel. No. You're not just somebody who's put a video up and, you know, off we go. You are the people to which you represent. Why this isn't a YouTube channel, why there is intention on how you accumulate it, this movement and into a channel that works and creates choice for the people who subscribe. So really what I have done as um, in terms of the, the, the movement membership itself is I've, I've really tried to remove barriers for people in, access, in accessing the, the membership itself and also fill gaps for people. So I'm, in, with that in mind, that is how we have created um, the membership itself. And, and also actually, because I came from um, management position in my, in my former career, knowing the programs that I was putting into place for our employees and seeing, uh, you know, not seeing, I should say, the return on investment for putting those things into place or the lack of follow through or just the fact that, um, you know, such, such low usage rate um, for different types of things. It was with all of those pieces in mind that I was putting this together because, it's not enough for me to just put it out there. I, I actually want people to love it. I actually want people to use it to, I want it to make a difference in their lives. 
um, that's where my passion comes from. It's not about how many people are there. It, it's, it's really about um, helping people to, to change their lives. So why it's not a YouTube channel. And I did, uh, initially I started putting out um, free content on YouTube um, as I was learning how to film as I was learning how to set up the room, as I was learning what lighting to use, what, you know, I, I accumulated a couple of different cameras and we, would work on different angles and those types of things. Um, so I was putting out content for the community that we had already built so that they had something to hold on to until we, we put together this whole program. But I mean, I know there are, there are millions of videos out there of different movement styles that you can get for free, absolutely. People need a reason to show up to do something. Um, and it's been my experience that when you put free things out, um, they don't, they don't, it's not the money investment, but they don't invest their time because they've got nothing to lose. So we've made our membership accessible for anyone. It's $20 a month. And what's included in it is it is far more than what you what most memberships uh, include um so it's enough money that you're putting money out there so that you have a reason that you want to show up because you're paying for it but it's not too much money that someone is saying you know what i i would love to be part of that community and i would love to be part of that movement but i i don't actually have the finances to support that if you can buy a cup of coffee every week at starbucks you can buy our membership um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't, I, just to be clear, I don't have to give up my Starbucks, right? No, you don't, <laughs> you don't but that's kind of where we're, we're And at. Starbucks. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing is too, that um, I want to be a connector for people. So we now have dozens of instructors that are on our platform and dozens more that are coming to be featured on the platform. And, um, and I do that for many reasons. I want to have diversity in our instructor community. It's, that's obviously very important to me. I also want to have all of those varieties of styles. And I believe in people being in their zone of genius. I believe in people knowing where, where their energy is and their passion is. And I want those people to bring that. I don't want to be the one that teaches the like, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to teach spin classes. Like that's not where my zone of genius is, but somebody else's is. So I want to bring those people in to highlight them and showcase them and also connect more people with them. So much so that I am happy if someone finds an instructor on our platform and ends up working with that person outside of the platform in their studio or where they, where they teach, that's beautiful. I want to be that connector. But we also, because of the price point that we're at, many people are purchasing our membership for their entire family because their kids can get access to it as well. And it's a great supplement for while the studios are closed. So they don't have to choose either or. Many people do both. What's your next shift going to look like? Oh, I am excited. I am so excited. So we've already, you know, we, we have the movement piece, we've added in workshops. Um, there's a lot of mindset pieces there. There's a lot of educational pieces there. And again, kind of looking at the corporate world, which is where we're heavily focused right now, um, working with businesses. It's with that in mind that that's how we're continuing to expand uh, um, our entire program. But even further, uh, we're, we're looking at, um, actually, uh, I'm, this is going to be the first time that I'm saying it out loud to, to uh, anyone other than my team. So you get the exclusive. Um, our, our very first large event that we are, are starting to put together is an event specifically for HR professionals. Um, it's going to be very much a day where oh, I want HR professionals to be seen and heard and I want them to feel valued and I want them to have a day where they're not looking after anyone else for that day they're looking after themselves. I want them to get education around things like burnout and different strategies that they can take to help themselves, but I also just want them to feel um, 
really just feel seen. I mean, HR professionals are so busy looking after every other person. And especially through this pandemic, it has, uh, personally, I have seen many, many people in HR um, lose themselves because they're so busy looking after everyone else. So we uh, are putting together an event that will be virtual that is going to include a lot of fun and pampering at the same time as some tools that they can actually take away from the event um, to, to help themselves, you know, things that they can do in the office, take two minutes to do a visualization that will just help to like reset that mind frame if they need. Um, or again, those educational pieces, you know, there's a lot of people that are dealing with burnout that they don't actually recognize that they have. Uh, highlighting what the signs and symptoms are and letting them know that there are things that they can do themselves, but then, you know, also, again, being a connector and, and hoping to connect people with, um, with good resources that will help them as well. But I'm really excited about that piece, um, just because it is in line with the, the corporate world that we're really heavily focused in right now. It's very much about health, um, but it's certainly something that just myself, my network, um, I see HR professionals um, just being undervalued. And I want to give them an experience that will hopefully let them release their shoulders down from their ears and breathe and, uh, and just feel very valued for that day. So that's, that's, that's our next big thing right now. You know what? I'm so excited. That is, you couldn't be more well-placed on a more deserving group of people who take care of all, everybody else every day. And isn't that the fastest 30 minutes ever? I know. <laughs> That brings us to, to time. A lot to take in, a lot to move to, a lot to be excited about. Your, your pivot has been amazing. It's been inspiring, inspiring to me ever since we first met. And I was so excited and happy to have you on. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much.